Jacob, are you pondering what I'm pondering? I think so, Drew. But wouldn't Moriarty disappear out of the holodeck? I think the only thing holographic is your brain. No, you fool. We're going to review an animated uh, movie on this here podcast. Brilliant! No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Why would anybody want to listen to geek, two geeks like us? Because, you fool, these people have uh, are so very easily entertained. Okay, Drew. Nerf! Hello and welcome to another episode of The Cellcast. Short. Joining me today is a man who uh, sometimes feels like second banana, Jacob. Why, thank you. I'd like to introduce our co-host, a man could have keep away from a big red gym. Welcome, Drew. How are you doing today, Jacob? Man, I'm doing good. They're like this is this has been a very interesting recording session we've been yes, going on. It has. <laughs> So um, yeah, we're we're obviously recording. You know, we've recorded two episodes today, and so yeah, it's 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 yeah, been a, a little, we we are a little goofy. At yeah, the moment, a little so. bit. Yeah. So um, yeah, we t- today we're just giving you a essentially a list. Uh, we each have, have a list of five sidekicks mm-hmm. that we like, and perhaps one we don't. Yes, and we're going to bring that to you. So uh, Jacob, since this list was your idea. You get to say who your first sidekick is. All right, so we're gonna start at our uh, number five, our uh, from bottom to top. So I'm gonna go with Puyo from Moana. Okay. Like he's he's a cool pig. Be like he's he's the sidekick you want. Be like he he tries his best. He be like he's just a cool pig. That's all he is. He's a cool pig. And so yeah, so yeah, Puyo, best pig. So far, so Wilbur might have something to say about that. Yeah, but he's not a sidekick. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what is your number five? My number five is that uh, that wacky, funny man uh, from the Muppet Theater, uh, Fozzie Bear. Oh, That's Kermit the Frog's uh, sidekick. Okay, that's now, the, he's technically one of. Three. One of two sidekicks. Yeah. Because technically Gonzo is also a sidekick in many of the in many of it. Right. But let's face it, as much as I like Gonzo, mm-hmm. there's just something lovable and goofy about Fozzie Bear. Yeah, I agree. Uh yes, his jokes are mold are old, but and they're not always funny, but he tries. Yeah. He, he tries he, so hard. He and does. He's just the most lovable. Uh, person, he's really the most outside of Kermit the Frog himself, right? Probably the most lovable uh character in the Muppets, I would okay. think. But uh, yeah, that's my first uh, that's my first sidekick there. Okay, so my number four is Rhino from Bolt. I, knew you were gonna bring that up. <laughs> I love Rhino when I first saw this. When I first saw this movie in theaters, it's like, oh my gosh, I love this hamster. Mm-hmm. He's so funny. And the fact that like, the voice actor was, I think he was like, he was an animation in between her. Yeah. And so they brought him as a, duh, as a, uh, a, like a, like a sampler and they loved him. So they loved his performance. They literally got him in the booth and he read the line where it's to be like, you are Rhino. And he lost it. It was so funny, but the the fact that the, that spoiler alert for Bolt Bolt's an amazing movie you should go watch it <laughs> go find it on Disney Plus it should be there but either way Rhino would be like he's a super fan of Bolt who's actually a not powered dog he's just an actor mm-hmm. but Rhino doesn't know that Rhino thinks he's the coolest super dog ever so I, I love his enthusiasm his borderline fan. Um, Fanboyism? Uh, huh? Fanboying? Fanboying it. Oh my gosh, he is such a fanboy. And he knows everything about Bolt. And I, I so wish, I so wish they would have done a Bolt series. You know, animated-wise, what mm-hmm. have you. I actually uh, wrote a uh, an email to uh, another podcast called uh, The Animation Addicts. Wrote scrippers mm-hmm. and wrote in about this, and they actually read it on the podcast, which is really cool. Um, but 
I really love this character because he, at the end of the movie, there again, spoilers, that he encourages Bolt, even though Bolt has realized he's just a dog. Mm -hmm. Be like, you don't need to be powers to be super or awesome. You just have to be you and be awesome. Yeah. (laughs) And that what I love about Rhino. He's the super encourager of everything, and he thinks he's a super powered (laughs) hamster in Mm -hmm. a ball. And everything he does is awesome. So, yeah. Rhino is my number four. What's your number four? My number four is the original sidekick. Okay. In my opinion. Okay. First, it's not the first sidekick technically, but it's the first one I think that comes to my mind when I think sidekick. Yeah. And the only reason he's not higher up this list is because he while he is there for the main character, mm-hmm. he's because he's, he's definitely there for the main character. Uh, he's almost not a full on sidekick because he's a character in and of himself. OK. And he's trying his best to get the main character to do the right thing. But the main character wants to go do his own thing. And he's he doesn't always get his just desserts, I think. OK, you're teasing me. Who is it? <laughs> Jiminy Cricket from oh, Pinocchio. Oh, okay. Very good. Very, very yes. good. Uh, yes. The, the character's name I take in vain. <laughs> Anytime <laughs> something doesn't go my way. Yes. <laughs> um, he is, of course, Pinocchio's conscience. Yes. The whole point of the character. Yes. But he uh, he's always... He's always there by Pinocchio's side, even mm-hmm. when Pinocchio is not doing the right thing. Yeah. He's trying to remind Pinocchio he, he's got to be a good boy if he's going to, you know, everything's going to come out all right. Yeah. But he's always there trying to help Pinocchio get out of whatever situation Pinocchio's got it in. Right. And as much as I like him in that. Yeah. There's another reason why he's on my list. Of course. <laughs> because he is also, as ever as I have to find a way to get this into every podcast. Yes, you do. (laughs) He's also a character in kingdom hearts. He writes the journal that, um, that tells you how, where, where Mm -hmm. everything is in the game. Oh yeah. And they do some cool things with that journal and throughout the series, but that's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. But Jiminy is always in that one. And he always provides an interesting little viewpoint on what's going on. He kind of works as Sora's conscience for a large part of that. Get those games and even the scene where they end up both times uh well the time jimmy's with them when they mm-hmm. get swallowed by monstro in the first mm-hmm. game yeah uh how quickly jiminy is by pinocchio side trying to get him hey we got to come back over here uh you got to be it, it's i just love the way jiminy cricket works yeah he's he's all he's extremely loyal mm-hmm. to pinocchio and he's actually there trying to get Pinocchio to do the right thing, despite the fact Pinocchio ignores him over and over and over oh, again. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's why he's my number four. Okay. So my number three might throw you for a loop. Okay. <laughs> you might have never even seen this film. Gargi from The Black Cauldron. <laughs> I still haven't seen this film. Okay. So Gorgi is this little fuzzball who's annoying as can be. Mm-hmm. He's a very annoying little character. And uh, all he wants to do is steal an apple from our main character. He's hungry. He just wants he wants apple. That's all he wants. And so he winds up being this very uh, this character who winds up being very helpful to our to our uh, to our protagonist to discovering where the black cauldron is spoiler alert. Um, and he just winds up being this very crucial character from being this very annoying little fuzzball Mm -hmm. to the, the character who jumps on the grenade sacrifices his life. There is a, there again, I'm saying it again, spoiler alert for black cauldron. Be like Gurgi jump be like jumps into the cauldron to destroy the cauldron. He sacrifices his life in order to save his friends. And so, and like most Disney movies, he comes back. Mm-hmm. He comes back. It's a great reunion. And 
he's the reason the two characters wind up kissing. <laughs> and uh, which I found that very funny. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. So if you haven't seen The Black Cauldron, go see it. It's a it's a so underrated Disney film that it's on Disney Plus. It's relatively be able to go watch. Go watch it. It's a fun movie, in my opinion. Now, if Eisner had not gone in there and chopped it half to death, not Eisner, but yeah, you know, whatever. Katzenberg. If Katzenberg had gone just chopped it to death, it might have been a better film. But <laughs> I digress. What is your number three? My number three might be technically a cheat, depending on how you look at it. Uh, okay. But because uh, the character is primarily known from video games. Okay. But this particular video game had quite a number of uh, animated series, which is why I'm counting it. Oh, okay. Uh, and this is actually tied with another character in some ways because I'm because so, I'm kind there there is actually two characters. I'm gonna admit I'm cheating a lot on number three. By okay, tied, I'm curious where you're going, but that's because they fill the same role both in the games and in the shows. Okay, and they both fill it equally well. The first is a certain two-tailed fox. I knew it from I knew Sonic the, the Hedgehog. Hedgehog. Tails. I'm referring to Miles Tails Prowler. <laughs> The second, the king, as as referred to in Super Smash Brothers Brawl, as the king of second bananas, Luigi Mario. Okay, okay, that's now that's, they're both that's, cheats. That's, yeah. I will grant you they're both well, cheats. They're animated series. They so. both have animated series. Yeah, they both have had. Uh, well, Sonic has had a movie. Yeah. Mario is about to have an animated, mo- another animated movie produced by Illumination. Really? Yeah, I didn't know about it's that. Like next year, or year after next. Oh, uh, okay. I don't remember exactly when? Oh, yeah, I remember seeing it. It is in production. Um, but of course, they had TV shows back in the nineties. Yeah. And in both cases, the, the characters were created to be player two. Right. Let's be honest. Okay. Yeah. Tails was a character created to be player two when your little brother picks up the game so he can help you in Sonic mm-hmm. Hedgehog two. Luigi is meant to be the player two character. Right. It's. And because. And when they translated that aspect of the characters mm-hmm. to the television screen, it works so beautifully in both shows. Okay. And it works so beautifully that that's why I can't even really separate them from the number three slot. Okay. And I admit they're both cheats uh, to some degree. That because I. Because sh- they're not primarily animated characters, but they have shows. I gotcha. So, yeah. Uh, Luigi and Tails are my number three. Okay. All right. All right. So my number two, I may have alluded to in the very beginning of this episode, Abu. Yeah. From Aladdin. <laughs> like Abu is just this, like kind of like Jiminy Cricket in a way that he's always by Aladdin's side, no matter what. Mm-hmm. And is always getting, because he's a very smart monkey voiced by who? Kevin? Frank Walker. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, all good. Wait, is that Jim Cummings? No, no it's Frank Walker. It's Frank Walker. I like can see it, Jim Cummings producing. Yes, I can. A boo, but yes, gotta... yeah. So, like, voiced by you know Frank Walker does an amazing job, and a boost is an amazing character. Minus he still he he does the one thing you're not supposed to do in the 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 he steals, the, the cave of wonders. He touches something other than the lamp. Yeah. Minus the carpet. And the ground. And the carpet. Yeah. Yeah. But it'd be like, Abus is an awesome character. I, I even liked him in Return Jafar. It'd be like, I thought Return Jafar, as a kid, was a very mm-hmm. fun movie. And Abu works pretty well in the live action version. Because he's somewhat animated in that, too. Okay, yeah. And, like, uh, I think he is fully animated in that, now that I think about it. But mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, Abu. And be like, there. I, I, there was a really tight. I'm gonna throw him in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Thumper from Bambi. Mm-hmm. I love Thumper. I've always loved Thumper. I haven't seen Bambi in years, but I've always <coughs> hairball. I've always liked Thumper. Thumper was a very cool character, uh, and plus his little thum, 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 like, which is awesome. I like his big feet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's he's a cool little rabbit, and uh, he's friend with a deer. Which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> At least he's not friends with a fox in a certain, you know, other film with a fox in a... Yeah. Hound? No. 
Another with a fox in it. Robin Hood? Nope. Sonic the Hedgehog? <laughs> nope. Keep trying. It's another Disney movie with a fox and a rabbit. I think we know I think we need to go to the zoo for this one. Oh, Zootopia. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Zootopia is it, it, for some reason it doesn't register with me as a Disney movie. Oh, okay. It registers me more as a Pixar. I agree. Of all things. Yes, I, I agree with you on that. Uh so yeah, that's that's my that's my number two with a tag on with Thumper. Mm-hmm. What's your number? My number two. Yes is a character who, in reality, while he is a sidekick, Mm -hmm. he's not really a sidekick to the characters in the movie, but to a character... He's a character in the movie. He's a sidekick to a character in the movie, but not the primary characters we follow throughout the movie. Right. The character... He's really more of a sidekick to the character that's the setting of the movie. Okay. I am referring to Bing Bong, uh, the imaginary friend from Inside Out. Out. That is a good one. Yes. And it's because it's Riley. Riley is the name yeah. of uh, the character of, who's the setting of that movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can see many shots, especially in those memories of Bing Bong and Riley playing uh, in many of the memories. And Bing Bong helps our main characters in that joy and sadness mm-hmm. uh, throughout much of that adventure and his death. Oh, yeah. Spoiler alert. Oh, yeah. Galore. His death will kill you mm-hmm. <laughs> because y- you kind of can see that's kind of what happened to your imaginary yeah. friend mm-hmm. in many, many ways. Yeah. And then we play the Double Mint Gum commercial again. <laughs> to make you laugh to get yeah. over the fact that oh Bing Bong is dead. Mm-hmm. Crap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that just that that tore my heart out. No. Yes. Anyway, so yeah, that's yeah. my second. That's okay. Your number one. My number favorite one favorite sidekick. Favorite sidekick. Okay. Or best sidekick. I don't remember which okay. one we're doing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll say like it's best both. best favorite. What have you? It's like okay, so. This little guy found his way to the person who he is best friends with by being chased up a tower by a snake and then getting healed by said person. I am referring to now what I just said is not context of the film. This is actually context of the series. Tangled, which I'm referring to Pascal. <laughs> okay. Yes. Like, <laughs> a snake? Yes. That must have been in the show. It was in the series. It was like, I have no idea who you're talking about, we, but I kind of assumed it was going to be Pascal yeah. from, when, from the time you told me, we're going to do this short. Because <laughs> I know you. I know yes. how much you love Tangled. <laughs> Yes. So my my fa- favorite or be- best sidekick is Pascal. Yes. Pascal because he's just a cool character. Be like what be like when you're stuck in a tower for 18 years and your best friend is a chameleon. Mm-hmm. Be like he's a pretty cool character. Yeah. Be like he he be like he's the human fr- the human friend frog as a as some characters call him a frog. <laughs> Uh, I just, I just love his character. He's a great character, and plus, he he does the final fatality of our main villain. Kind of, she was already dead anyway. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, Pascal is my number one. What is yours? My number one might count as the quintessential sidekick. Okay. Lay it on me. Okay. His name is Dick Grayson, a.k.a. the original Robin the Boy Wonder from Batman. Oh, nice. (laughs) And I'm not just specifying 
one single version. Although if I had to pick one, there's so many versions. I of would it. probably pick Batman the animated series because that show is my favorite. Yeah. But Robin in nearly every incarnation is virtually the same character. Yeah. Batman changes more often than Robin does. That is true. Robin is always kind of the fun-loving acrobat. Yeah. Well, Dick Grayson <laughs> is. Dick Grayson is, specifically. Um, I, he's my favorite of the Robins, yeah. for being honest. Just because, yeah. prob- mostly to some degree, because he is the original. Now, yeah. admittedly, once he becomes Nightwing... Not so much. <laughs> oh, you he, he becomes too Batman-ish at that point. Yeah. Oh, you and Era would have a very interesting discussion but, on that one. Um, That'd be fun. <laughs> all uh, every incarnation of Dick Grayson's Robin from, and I'm just gonna list stuff that's not animated because let's face right. it, there's a Robin is just quintessential sidekick. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, specifically Dick Grayson. Mm-hmm. So you've got. The, the corny version played by Burt Ward mm-hmm. in the Batman uh, television series and in the two straight to DVD. Uh, mm-hmm. Agreed. Uh, Good call to that series. <laughs> Good call with that one. You've got uh, Robin from the animated series. You've got, even though he's not a sidekick in this, uh, Dick, the Dick Grayson Robin in Teen Titans yeah. is just a great follow up of that character. Yeah. He's when he is with Batman. Admittedly, he's not always with Batman. Yeah, but when he is on at Batman's side, he is uh, he's always he, he asks relevant questions mm-hmm. when he needs to ask questions. He follows Batman's lead whenever it's needed, and when Robin has a better idea, he speaks up. Yeah, <laughs> it's not always perfect, but he is when you get right down to it. The he's what I think of when people say sidekick. Agreed. Is, Specifically, Dick Grayson. Now, admittedly, I think always Robin. I have to stop and go, oh, yeah, Dick Grayson specifically mm-hmm. as Robin because you had to add more people, mm-hmm. including people who I didn't like. But um, <laughs> yeah, specifically, Dick Grayson as Robin okay. is my number one most liked sidekick. Okay. And now we talk about our one most hated, most disliked, least favorite. <laughs> Sidekicks, Kick. you go first. Okay, so and I'm going to pray you didn't peel my, pick mine. Okay, okay. So we're only doing one because we don't want to be negative. We don't want to be negative so much with the the uh, the times we are in now. We're just going to pick one and probably ridicule this character half to death. But either way, my number one kind of relates with my number five. Hey, hey, from Moana. Uh, God, I hate that chicken. I'm so glad we didn't pick the same one. <laughs> you know, Hey Hey was intended to actually be an angry character. Oh yeah, I know because and he's, they changed him to a goofy character. No, he's not even a goofy character. Goofy dumb. Yeah, dumb dumb. He's a dumb dumb. <laughs> I do not like this character because I like the original design of what they had him as. He was a brave, kind of a goofy character, but and plus like. Pano was part of the original, you know, traveling group. Mm-hmm. But then they dumbed down Hey Hey, and he's just like, what the heck are you doing here? Be like, I, I'm, I'm kind of with, uh, oh, oh, come on. What's the. The Rocks character. Maui, thank you. Maui, yes. Maui, okay. It throws me off because it's like, that's the name of an island, not the name of a character. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so when Maui like threatens to be like, oh, let's eat him. Let's throw him with this. I'm thinking like, yes, eat him. Eat him. Do something with the character. Because all he does is peck at rocks. That's all he does. Now, the, the one big upside to his character, he is voiced by Alan Tudyk. A man who went to Juilliard to play a dumb chicken. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, you had to put Tudic in there. That's cool. But why did you make him the dumb chicken? <laughs> Either way, be like, I, I do not like Hey Hey. Be like, you could have put Pana on the boat. I know he got scared, but he would have made a far better sidekick. <laughs> Either way, I do not like Hey Hey. <laughs> what is your number one dislike sidekick? My number one disliked character, sidekick, 
character is once again a partial cheat. Okay. Here's let's, the thing. let's see where you go with that. The show he's in, of course, he is animated. Yeah. While the movies he's in are live action movies, his character is animated. He was played in both cases by a man named Ahmed Best. And any Star Wars fans know who I just said without me saying his name. Okay. Jar Jar, Jar Binks. Binks. He shows he's, he's up. He's in the Star Wars. He's in movie. Star Wars The Clone Wars. Oh my gosh. And he is animated <laughs> in Star Wars Episodes 1, 2, and 3. Now. Oh my word. Okay. My apologies <laughs> to Mr. Best. Because I actually think. He does a good job as the yes. character. His acting is great. Yes. Especially from the special effects I've seen of the original trilogy, how they handled him in that role. Mm-hmm. I hate this character. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, brother. Preach it. <laughs> now, here's the thing. You might be going, wait a minute, Drew. How on earth is Jar Jar Banks a sidekick? Oh, he's so much a sidekick. Well, in the three movie, in the first two mo- in the first movie, yeah, he's hanging out the entire time, not really c- helping a bit. In reality, Qui Gon and Obi Wan, yeah, he is their sidekick throughout that movie. Yeah. Now, admittedly, the other two movies, he's more of Padme's sidekick. Yeah, but he's also not doing very much because he's technically the representative. Yeah, while Padme is the senator. Why would and, you make Jar Jar a representative? Well, why? <laughs> who knows why the Gungans do what they do? Yeah. And if it was just that, I, if it was just that, I could let it go. Yeah. Then there has the TV show, The Clone Wars. Now, Star Wars: The Clone Wars. I have not finished it. Yeah, I'll admit. But his episodes, while brilliantly written are cringeworthy in most of the performances. <laughs> not because the acting is bad. Right. Not because the writing is bad, but because they knew this character was not liked. But they right. knew they had to keep him in there. Yes. Because he was present at this point of it. And so they made him more of a comedy relief than he is in the movies. I uh, understood. The problem is, is there's actually full episodes where he somehow, through his ineptness, becomes the hero of the episode. <laughs> I remember that. And it <laughs> it boggles my mind. Yeah. Now keep in mind, I actually like what they do with the character. Okay. But as a sidekick, which is what he is. And yeah. All that character is meant to be yeah. throughout the entire franchise. Yeah, you're bowling down the dozens. Yeah. He is multiple si- characters sidekick. He's an annoying character. Mm-hmm. And if you want to make me hate a character, you make him annoying. Mm-hmm. And that is why Jar Jar Binks is my least favorite sidekick because even if he wasn't a sidekick, I'd hate him. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh. Admittedly, now I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. Now that I've gone over why I don't like Jar Jar Binks. Okay. I don't think he's one of the reasons why the the prequel trilogy is as bad as it is. Okay. I have other issues with it. Right. In reality, Jar Jar Binks is an aquatic Ewok, and the series survived Ewoks before he's really not any worse. Okay. That works. It's just that he's the main character. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that brings us to the end of this shorts episode of the Cellcast. We hope you have enjoyed it. Join us next week for a very special episode that we have put together to celebrate the release of the first part of Final Fantasy VII Remake released on the PlayStation 4. Yes. Because we are reviewing Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Complete. Complete. So join us. Come, Jacob. We must prepare for next week. Prepare for what, Drew? Same thing we do every week, Jacob. Record a podcast! Oh, boy! So where can they find you, Jacob? They can find me on Facebook at Jacob B. Heron and Jacob's Daily Art Corner, my personal art Facebook page, on Twitter at Jacob B. Heron, on Instagram at Jacob B. Heron, and on Letterboxd at Jacob Heron. Where can they find you, Drew? 
Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. You can also find my Facebook page at Drew's Photo Bin where I upload uh, my photography. You can also follow me on Letterboxd at GGeorge759 and Twitter at GGeorge759. Where can they find us, Jacob? You can also visit our website, the Cellcast dot podbean.com where you will find every episode we released and links to listen to it on apple podcast google play and stitcher our rss feed if we aren't in your favorite podcast app directory please share review and subscribe to us there and share us with your friends you will also find a link to our facebook group the double feature podcast community where we talk about both animated and live-action movies. We share this with our other podcasts, which we do with Jacob's brother Jim, at uh, the Movie of the Week podcast, where we talk about live-action movies. You can also email us at thecellcastpodcasts at gmail.com. Also, please like our page on Facebook. We try to post about upcoming movies. If you comment on that movie's post before we record, we'll read your comments in the episode. And remember, every time we say the cell cast, that is with a single L. L.